video, we're going to solve a problem which appeared in J Main 2023. It's a problem which is very, very interesting. So let's go ahead and first understand the problem statement. So here we have two equations. One equation have the greatest integer function involved and the second one have a mod function involved in it. Now here it says that m and n are the number of real roots in this for that given equation. And then we have to find that m square in n and m square, right? So therefore it's clear that to solve this particular problem, we need to find out the values of m and n. Thus, we need to find out the number of real roots of these two equations. So let's go ahead and solve. Obviously, we will consider the two given equation. And first, we need to concent concentrate on the first equation. That's the equation involving the greatest integer function. So the equation in blue in color. So now here, we'll first assume that, right, that x is lies between, right, two integer n and n plus one, right? Now, why we consider that that n is lies between that n and n plus one, right? Because uh, we know that that box x value or the greatest integer function value changes, right? Uh, always depending on that integer value, right? Or so if it lies between zero to one, it takes some other value. If it lies between minus one to minus two, some other values and so on and so forth, right? So here, first we consider that n and n plus one. So that's why we can consider two integer point and let us assume that x belongs to inside that integer. Interval. Now here, right, to understand the problem, we have to uh, under, go ahead and always remember the definition of greatest integer function. In the greatest integer function, right, it's properly defined in the interval where left hand side is a closed interval. That's why you see that, that when I write n less than equal to x less than n plus 1. So this is very crucial. We'll see that in a moment. Okay. So now, when x lies between that n to n plus 1 interval, it is obvious that that box x is equal to n. And thus, we can find out that x squared minus 12x plus n plus 31 equal to 0. Now, we need to find out, right, the number of real roots in this particular equation, right? So now, how we go ahead? Now, to solve this particular problem, right, we first consider, right, that or we first rewrite that equation, right, in some typical form, right? So that's why, that's why we convert it in completing the square technique, right? So therefore, we understand that, right, here, x squared minus uh, 2.6x plus 6 squared plus n plus 31 minus 6 squared. So what we performed here, we just add 6 squared and try to rewrite the 12x into 2ap term. So here, the first three term will be converted to x minus 6 whole squared and the remaining will be n minus 5. So now if we uh, rearrange this, right, so therefore we'll get that x minus 6 whole squared is equal to 5 minus n. Now, our job is mostly done. So here we can say that n is a integer. That's the small n is a integer, right? Now here see that for uh, simplicity, we consider that x lies between n2 and plus 1 and also in the problem n is mentioned, right? So that particular n and this n little bit different, right? So uh, here we are not talking about that m and n be the number of real roots. So that's what we are not talking about. Okay, so let's go ahead. So here we see that, right, for any real x, right, x minus 6 whole square is greater than or equal to 0. So therefore, 5 minus n is always greater than 0. And that's why n is less than or equal to 5. Now, what is the meaning that n is less than or equal to 5? That means that, right, that we have to consider the domain uh, of x in such a way that box x value will be less than or equal to 5. It cannot take 6, 7, and so on and so forth, right? That's it. So the n value will be minus infinity to 5. Now let's proceed. Now uh, we concentrate on the equation x minus 6 whole square equal to 5 minus 9. So from that equation, we can easily find the roots of this equation as x is equal to 6 plus minus square root of 5 by n. Okay, that's it. Let's go ahead. The real roots of this equation will be 6 plus minus square root of 5 by n, right? That's it. But here we have to notice that we have to choose the values of n, right? So n equal to uh, 
plus 5, my, plus 4, plus 3, plus 2, and so on, like minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and so on, so forth, right? And we have to test, right, that uh, is x belongs to, right, in and n plus 1, right? Let's go ahead and take some values. So, first we consider that n equal to 5. So, if n equal to 5, so n x must be lies between n and n plus 1. So, it will be 5 and 6. 5 close interval, uh, 5 is closed, 6 is open. So, now, if we substitute that n equal to 5, right, what will be the value of x? x is equal to 5 minus 5, 0, so x is equal to 6. But obviously, right, x doesn't belong to the interval, close interval 5 to 6. So, this solution we cannot consider. Because here, when we talk about uh, greatest integer function, the right interval, right, or right side value, it doesn't have the equal sign. It's an open thing. So that's why we don't consider the solution. Let's go ahead. If I take n equal to 4, again, it will, x lies between, need to lies between 4 to 5. And if we substitute in the values of x, it gives you 7 and 5. And which is, again, doesn't belong to 4 and 5. Go ahead and substitute n equal to 3. We get the same scenario here as well, right? So here I calculate the numeric values. We have to guess it obviously by the square root thing because square root of 2 is well known. And if I go ahead and substitute n equal to 2, again we observe that it doesn't belong to that 2, 3. And the same phenomena obviously is goes on. We just tried few values. So now if I go ahead and substitute n equal to 1, equal to 0, and so on and so forth, right? We can easily understand that, right? That we doesn't get any solution in these cases right so therefore we can say that if x lies between two integer n and n plus one then we should not obtain any solution in this particular or given equation which is x square minus 12x plus blocks x plus 31 so what's the conclusion the conclusion is that right the given equation doesn't have any real solution right and that's why m should be equal to zero and that's it so therefore we able to obtain the values of m which will be zero now here we can easily see that to solve this particular problem we have to go ahead and do a little bit of uh, trial and error method right so in mass this trial and method uh, should not go uh, or it's not should not be good enough right so that's why we try to solve the same problem right or the try to find out the uh, number of real roots for this particular equation right in a different method also which is called graphical technique so therefore we need to sketch the graph and let's see how can we find the solution okay let's process it we start with that x minus 6 whole square equal to 5 minus 9. Now here, we just rewrite this equation in such a way that 5 minus x minus 6 whole square is equal to box x, right? Now, we assume two different functions, fx and gx, right? So right, left-hand side is fx and right-hand side is gx, right? Now we know that, right, that uh, the real roots of the given equation that x square 12 x box x and 31 will be the point of intersection of the graph fx and gx so if we able to plot the fx and if we to plot the gx function then how many point how many points they will intersect based on that right we are able to we are able to get the solution so now first we need our job is to sketch the function fx now to sketch the function fx first we try to uh, find out the roots of the equation fx equal to zero so therefore we take five equal minus x minus six whole square equal to zero and if we solve the uh, using the square root technique we can find x is equal to approximately equal to 8.24 and 3.76 so what that means it means that that the roots of this equation will lie inside the open interval 3 comma 4 and 8 comma 9 okay that's it so therefore, we our understanding of the function fx should be it's actually a equation which roots or zeros lies inside the open interval 3 to 4 and 8 to 9. And also notice that that it is a parabola obviously inverted downwards. Why? Because the coefficient of x squared is negative, okay, in fx, right? So therefore it's a parabola downwards. And also notice that, right, for any values of x, x minus 6 whole square is greater than or equal to 0. And that's why fx, that is 5 minus x minus 6 whole square, will be less than or equal to 5. Hence, fx will attain its 
maximum value at x equal to 6 and the maximum value will be f um, 5 right so these are the information we obtain for this given function fx okay and for box x we know the plot right so now we our aim is to sketch these two function fx and gx ahead and try to sketch the function right so here we go ahead and consider a horizontal axis and a vertical axis and we just uh, go ahead and take the graph paper kind of thing right so now here we uh, take the values from minus 2 to 10 in both the axes okay that's it now our job is to find out the sketch of it right so here the roots lies between 3 to 4 and 8 to 9 right so that's why we just uh, mark the point 3, 4, and 8, 9. And as fx as a uh, zeros, right, in this interval, right, so therefore the graph must cross the x axis at this particular point. And it's having a maximum value at x equal to 6. And the maximum value is also 5. So that's why we take a point which is first uh, 6, 0, and 5, 6, 5, right? That's it. So therefore, we can easily get that the plot of the function fx, right? So it's an inverted parabola, right? That's it. So we're able to sketch the function, right? So that's it. Now, we need to find out the sketch of the function of box x. So we know what is the case for box x. So in the interval, minus 1 to 2 is the greatest integer less than minus 1. So that is minus 2. And in the next case, right, it will be minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and so on and so forth, right? That's it. So here we can understand that, right, that uh, our curve or the box x function do, doesn't touch the given parabola, right? There are only two possibilities of touching it in, in the position, right, which is, uh, which should be marked at that uh, x equal to 5 here and point x equal to 6 but notice that this two points should not be at these two points right the box x function doesn't take that value right because here it is a open interval so that's why we can conclude that our function gx our function gx and fx should not intersect anywhere in the real axis or minus infinity to plus infinity so which proves that right the given equation of the first equation doesn't have a solution hence m equal to zero now see that in this process of process where we can sketch it and go ahead right uh, the problem solving would take little lesser time it's the understanding of plotting of a quadratic equation now we should consider on concentrate on the second equation and let's go ahead and try to find out the number of zeros or the roots of that particular equation let's go ahead to solve the second equation first we consider the case one right because it's a mod function so in case one we consider that x greater than equal to minus two in x greater than equal to minus two we find mod of x plus 2 will be equal to x plus 2 and that's why the given equation will be reduces to x square minus 5 x plus 2 minus 4 now if we just multiply by 5 and do the arithmetic calculation it will be reduces to x square minus 5x minus 14 if we do the basic uh, uh, middle term factorization it will be reduces to x minus 7 plus x plus 2 is equal to 0 right now notice that right that it x equal to 7 and x equal to minus 2 okay that's it so we're able to find out the solution okay which is x equal to minus 2 and x equal to plus 7 right that's it now notice that right this two solution obviously it should be accepted right why because uh, x is greater than equal to minus 2 so minus 2 is also accepted 7 is also accepted solution let's go ahead and consider the case 2 In case two, we consider that x is less than of minus two. So therefore, mod of x plus two will be less equal to minus x plus two. So in the similar process, the given equation will be reduced to x squared plus five x plus six, right? Again, that particular equation can be easily factorizable. So if I factorize with the middle term, it will be equal to x plus three and x plus two. So therefore, x will be equal to minus two and minus three. 
but notice that right here we should not cons uh, uh, consider x equal to minus 2 why because our domain is right x less than minus 2 not e less than equal to so therefore we should omit these particular values right so therefore x is equal to minus 3 is the only solution for this particular problem So therefore, we can say that the number of real roots of the equation involving the mod function is 3, right? So case 1 to have 2 roots, case 2 have only 1 root. So minus 2, 7 and 3 are the roots of this equation. So therefore, we can say that for this particular problem, right, our m and n, right, is already obtained. We can proceed that in that case, uh, uh, the first equation a is equal to 0 and for the second equation n is equal to 3, right? That's it. So therefore, we can easily calculate that what is the required values n square plus a min plus n square and that's obviously equal to plus 9 and hence 9 is the correct choice and that's it. So it's a very tricky problem, but if we solve using that uh, graphical technique, it just takes uh, mini as a minimum time minimum time otherwise we we have to proceed further right so here we solve both the techniques so whatever it suits you please go ahead and solve that according to you hope you understood this thank you